Alrighty guys, so how's it going today? So welcome to a crappy cloudy freaking day. It's been raining a little bit here and there too today. I think it rained most of this morning, but... Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I feel like it's kind of misty a little bit right now too. I, oh God, there's a truck here too. So... Yeah, this is kind of going to be... I guess, I don't know what you want to call it, maybe like kind of like a response video to uh, Buzz, Buzz Saw's video where he was talking about the CB stuff and uh, get some lights going here so you can see. Um, <clears throat> freaking cold out too. And there's been this red car over here sitting at this house for quite a few days now. It looks like a pretty fancy red car too. It's got some, it's got some nice, nice rims on it. But anyways, yeah, this is kind of video response to his video. Um, talking about, about some stuff. And uh, <clears throat> he was saying something about the, uh, um, forget what he, what, what he called it, something for when you, transmit or whatever um, that was going to be um, pretty high amperage or whatever I don't really know exactly I kind of forget now but <clears throat> the thing is that in my book it only says four watts which I tr think I tried to google it and google wouldn't help because <laughs> I think I was doing it wrong but whatever so sometimes google won't work for me but, uh, yeah, and I went and, uh, I didn't say anything in, in there, in the book or what to use, you know, for, it just said 4 watts. So, that didn't tell me much there. But, I th the thing that I should have did, which I didn't do, which is, you know, I don't know what you want to call it, it's my bad, you know. Is that I should have pulled the fuse out of the uh, out of one of those wires for the, the power. Because I think both of those power wires came with a fuse in them, <clears throat> and that's a four amp fuse. Because I pulled it out and I looked at it. See, and the thing that I got coming um, is only a two amp. And my uncle thought that that would probably be more than enough, so that's why I, I ordered it. Because he thought that radios would only take a certain amount of amperage, you know, to run and, and uh, transmit with. So, I think I'm probably going to have to invest in another power supply, which means you'll probably have to invest in a bigger one. So, <clears throat> I think he was he was talking about getting a 7 amp. Or, or at least maybe a 10 amp. Probably no bigger. Well, you could go bigger if you want, but... I only plan on running, you know, the CB radio. I don't plan on, you know, I don't plan on running anything else unless I get, you know, a, UH, a UHF radio later on in life, but not right now. And if I do switch over to UHF, well, then all the CBs are going to be going because I won't be needing them. But, <clears throat> but right now, I'm just going to be sticking with CBs because that's just the way, you know, it's cheap and it's free. Basically, you know, you don't have to really pay for it, so... You just have to buy the, the crack to make it work, and that's it. You don't have to have a license. You don't have to go to class, you know, to take to, to get a license, you know. Like you do with UHF, you got to go to class or whatever for that. You can do it online, too, I think. So, but I'm not doing that right now. I ain't got time for that, so. But, yeah, so. <clears throat> um, the power supply that I ordered was only 2 amp. Um. Which, I mean, it's a little bit more of an improvement than what I'm running right now. That's for bloody sure. So, I may be doing a little bit better on that. Um, so, but, uh, yeah. So, <clears throat> right, right, yeah, right now I got the radio kind of, um, well, I pulled the power wire out of it. Because I wanted to see what kind of freaking amp, or what kind of 
fuse was in that stupid thing and in the wire. And that says 4 amp. It says F4W, so I figured that meant for 4 watts. Well, what the F stands for, I don't know. Because the book doesn't really tell you nothing. There's only like one page that tells you on power output and transmitter output and stuff like that. And that's all 4 watts. What that is in amperage, I don't know. So, <clears throat> yeah. So I know why the CB's not working. Now, I, I, when I said that the CB's not working, it's working. It's just that I don't think it's getting the power that it needs to push out like it should. And obviously that's why I'm not hearing anything. But when I did install it, and I was using, well, actually I didn't even get my, my 2 amp power supply yet. That's not even here yet, so that's kind of pissing me off. It should have been here, you know, quite a while ago, but it's, I don't know. I ordered a couple other things off of eBay, too, and they didn't get here in time. They were supposed to be here. I ordered two things for the tractor, and they were supposed to be here on, here on the 24th, and they haven't even come here yet, so I know that guy's going to get a bad review. Fucking lying son of a bitch, but whatever. Just a couple of books for the tractor, anyway. So... <clears throat> Yeah, so, but the thing is that when I was, see now I was in my garage, Big Red was in the garage, so the CBs are not that far apart, you know, they're only maybe 10, 20 feet apart, right, so <clears throat> we did do a little test, and he could hear me and I could hear him, but there was a little bit of static in between, but... <clears throat> I think it might have been most likely because of the power supply. It just wasn't big enough to really get rid of any, you know, get rid of the extra static or whatever the hell's going on. I don't know. So, but I know that it's working on Big Red because um, a couple of days ago I went out into the field. Um, no, I, I ran over to the farm, had to do a couple things there, and then... On the way there, on the way back, I was picking up truckers. And I know that's that antenna, you know, is short. It only, it only goes like four miles or whatever. It's not, you know, it's more than enough. But <clears throat> you know, I was picking up channel 19 decent. There were some truckers that were talking every now and then. But so then what I did is when I got home, I checked, uh, you know, Big Red Radio one more time, and I was hearing some truckers. And I went over to the big CB on the house, and I wasn't getting anything. And I am getting the weather channels on the CB radio, so I know my antenna's working. And we're going to get into that too. But I think I have an idea of there's two possible. Well, I'm going to say that there's two main two main reasons why this radio is not working. It's not performing to my liking. And the one is probably the power supply. It's obviously it's not big enough to do what what I need it to do. The 2 amp may do a little bit better, but it's probably not going to help a hell of a lot. So, I mean, this power supply I got now, you know, cost me like 30 bucks. So, I guess I could just turn around and sell it back on eBay and get my money back out of it. But, you know, then you're kind of losing a little bit of money too because then you have to go to the mail and ship it out or whatever. And they charge you, charge you by weight or whatever. So, I mean, it wouldn't be that heavy, but they're going to charge you a little bit. So... <clears throat> And, well, we'll get into the second thing, but when he was talking about the antenna, he said that the mobile antenna needs a big ground plane or whatever, or a big grounding surface, like a car, for instance, you know, if you were to put it on a car, it would, it would use your car's chassis and the body, if it was steel, it would be using that as, as your, your ground, pretty much. So... You know, the thing is, yeah, it works, that's the main thing, you know, it, yeah, it works on cars, but it works on houses, too, and the reason I say that is because if you look it up on YouTube, and I'll even post the link below, and Buzzsaw, if you're watching this video, I want you to check that link out, um, it's not spam, okay, I'm not going to spam you with anything, it's, it's, a, it's a YouTube video, he's running a 102 inch whip antenna on top of his house. Or his workshop, whatever the hell it is. It looks like a house to me. But. <clears throat> but I'm thinking another reason why, even though I have my antenna grounded, 
you know, and it's got a pretty big, you know, the, the tripod's pretty, you know, it's not super huge, but I mean, that acts like a growling surface too for it. But I think what I'm missing is I'm missing, um, I forget what they call them now, ground planes or something like that. It's, it's like little, my weather radio antenna has them. They're, they're like little antennas that stick out. <clears throat> and I think that's supposed to help increase your, your grounding surface or something like that anyway. So I'm thinking that's what I'm missing. Is that I don't have those big grounding antennas on the sides. Because if you go check out this guy's videos, that's what he's got on his. Is those little, you know, his antenna goes straight up. And then he's got these little side antennas or whatever. They just kind of drift into, no, into nothing, you know. They're probably, you know, three, four feet long or whatever. <clears throat> and... I think that's, well, I think he's also got a, he might have a, I think he's got a copper or a copper rod in the ground, too, so that, you know, it's like eight feet long or whatever. Yeah, I didn't do that. And I don't know whether, what's the difference, because it's copper either way you freaking look at it. You're either copper, you're grounding it to copper piping in your basement, or you're running one in the ground. Well, what the hell is the difference, because you got about easily a hundred feet of freaking copper pipe running around in their basement, you know, so that should be, and I think that's grounded to the ground too, because your pipe goes into the ground, so it should be grounding okay, I think it's grounding okay there, because if it wasn't grounding at all, I don't think I'd be able to even pick up weather channels, and I'm picking up Basically all about, I'm thinking I'm, I think I'm picking up about the same as what my weather radio does. So, I mean, you're not going to get all 10 channels, but you're going to get what's local to you. And I get about, I think about three or four channels. One is, one is Canadian, so. <clears throat> yeah, one's Canadian, and then I think there's two out west. And then there's, here, there's one here in my county that we get, so, which the one here in my county does, does me no, no good at all, because the storms always come from the west, and the time my weather radio goes off, the storms are already on top of us, or they're already past us. But I already figured that out, so now I'm getting North Dakota's, I got North Dakota's codes punched into my radio, so now I'm picking up their shit before, so just before the storms even hit, you know, they're easily probably 10 miles away. You know, I get heads up before they even get here. So, so I know that my CV's doing good, good on that. But like I said, I'm not. I just don't know why I'm not getting anything on the CV side. But I'm thinking, I don't know. It's not. It really shouldn't be a grounding issue. Just because if it was a poor grounding issue, you'd think that it'd be that way on the weather channel side too. You wouldn't be picking up any of that crap. You know? So, I don't know. It's, I never really had this kind of a problem because I'm kind of, well, you could say that I'm new to putting CVs in a house, but, <clears throat> holy shit. But I'm not, like, super new because I have a CV on Big Red. Now, that's grounded to the frame of the four-wheeler, so, you know, CVs, CVs are never going to be exactly perfect. I mean, that's just the thing, you know, they're, even with big red CV, I think I, every now and then I still get some static. I mean, well, that's because I don't have a filter on there, you know, to get rid of the extra bit of static and whatever. You can order filters for them. You know, we can order one for the power wire, and then I think you can get one for the CB wire. Because Big Red was always getting so much static, and then when Big Red's fans turn on, um, <clears throat> I get a lot of static, or I get a, I get kind of like a screaming sound coming through my radio. But that's because I don't have that filter on that wire. I've been meaning to get one, but I just haven't gone around to it. So I don't, I mean, that's, I don't think that's the issue for the house. 
So, <clears throat> I'm thinking maybe it's just because of the, the, you know, the power supply that I'm giving it now is not big enough, so it's not pushing out. Um, I don't know. Because, I mean, it works fine on, on the weather side, so why would it not work on the CV side? <clears throat> And then he was saying that you'd have to put, you know, if you wanted to use this kind of an antenna, you'd have to put like a 30-foot rod or something on top of that or underneath that, you know, the antenna, your antenna would go on top of that. <sighs> well, I'm not getting a 30-foot pipe. That's just stupid to do. So, you, I mean, you, if you had to do that, you'd just be better off getting... And like an 18 foot base station antenna, you know, they're only eight feet, 18 feet tall compared to a 30 foot pipe or yeah, 30 foot pipe plus another 102 inches on top of that. And you know, whatever, you know, it's good. It's getting up there too high, you know, that's the thing. So <clears throat> that's why, uh, well, I didn't really want to go with the base station antenna either. I mean, I have thought about it. Don't get me wrong. I have thought about it. But I don't like the fact that they go way out. I mean, for that one that he was talking about, <clears throat> um, that's that one there. He was talking about, you know, 18 feet tall, and it's just like a big piece of uh, PVC piping or whatever, pretty much. Um, <clears throat> I think the range on those was like 15 to 20 miles, and I'm not using the CB to talk to truckers or you know, or just listen in the chatter, you know, I'm basically using it for when I'm here in town, or when I'm out, the, the main reason why I'm doing this is because when I'm out in the fields, um, either, either it's at the farm, you know, out in those fields, or it's way at the end of town, you know, when you go into certain spots of the fields, you lose signal with your cell phones, there's no signal. And apparently there's supposed, to be, there's supposed to be towers around here, but that's a bunch of bullshit. So, <clears throat> I mean, it says on, on the internet, on, online that there's towers here, but I still get very shitty connection, so, but whatever. This, this, I think this phone here does a little bit better than what my last one did, but it's, it's, and another thing too is that you know they may they may want to main, you know do maintenance on their towers and or the towers could get damaged in, in a storm or something you know and then you have no cell phone tower you know I mean your cell phones are useless whereas on a big CB radio setup you know that's <clears throat> that's not gonna that's not gonna die you know I mean unless you break the antenna or something but you know it's just. It's a, it's, a, it's kind of like a backup source, but it's also going to be, be my main source too. Um, I plan on putting I plan on putting a CB in the tractor too, but that's going to be a lot simpler because I don't have to run a ground wire then because I can get a get a magnet mount antenna and that's supposed to ground to the it'll ground to the cab of the tractor or the tractor itself. The car driving by. That's, that's actually with neighbors. <clears throat> so, putting a CB on in the tractor will actually be a piece of cake. Big Red was a piece of cake too, but I did have to run a, I did run a ground wire to that just because I didn't have a, uh, I had nothing to ground to. Because Big Red's all freaking plastic pretty much. So, but yeah, um, you can use a 102 inch whip. It's just that I think the reasons why mine are, why mine's not working is because I'm missing those two extra features to make it work. I think it's not getting enough power, and it's maybe a poor ground, something. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I grounded it, but that may not be enough. I mean, that's only 14 gauge wire, so that's wrong. Apparently, it's enough on Big Red, but Big Red's a smaller machine too. So, and the antennas way they way they held smaller. <clears throat> But there's I, there's plenty of people that use those 102 inch whips, you know, on top of houses and and stuff like that. So 
and I don't really want to have to get rid of it. I know he was saying, you know, to you'd be better off getting that, you know, base station antenna. Oh, yeah, yeah, but I bought this now. So I kind of have to make it work because I'm not going to spend more money, you know, trying to make another a different setup work, you know. And he was saying something about, about my SWR readings. Well, they're perfect. Um, I, I hooked my SWR meter back up to it because I think I had messed with it on the radio side. Because my radio does have a built-in SWR meter. It's, a, it's just that people recommend to not use them because they're not accurate compared to if you want, if you got one that was separate. Which I do have one. That's why you think I got Big Red tuned, you know. I had to get a tuner to tune it, so... So I do have an SWR meter. Um, it came with that jumper cable too. I got I, I got all this shit off of rightchannelradios.com. So you know they had all that stuff there that I needed to get Big Red going and for the house. So <clears throat> you know, see, and the thing is, too, with the base station antenna, it's just that I don't need to go that far out. You know. So I mean, yeah, it would probably work. But this, I mean, this antenna here, I think when you get it tuned just right, it's supposed to go anywhere from 7 to 10 miles, which is still overkill. But I probably could have gotten another, another antenna just like what's on Big Red, and it probably would have been just fine. Could have probably gotten a 5 foot, probably would have been alright. Big Red's, Big Red's antenna is only a 4 foot, so I'm probably less than that now. Because I had to cut so, much, cut so damn much of it off to even tune the damn thing right. So, and the thing is, with the uh, 102 inch whip antenna, that's, I think, already kind of like pre-tuned because you can't tune them, you know, very well. I mean, you can't take the antenna off and then cut a piece off and then put it back on there. I can't do that. So, but then when I went and checked the SWR readings, you know, I think channel 1's at like a 1. So that's absolutely freaking perfect. And then I think channel 40... I think it was at a 1.4, so it's, it's pretty close to what Big Red is. Big Red's slightly, slightly higher than that. I think Big Red on channel 1 is probably a 1.2 or something. And I think Big, I mean, on channel 40, it was like a 1.4 or 5 or something like that. So, I mean, Big Red with, is within reason, you know. He's within, the, he's within the safe zone. I wouldn't want to go any higher than a 2, that's for sure, because over that, you're just going to start ruining your radio. So. But the thing is, is that I don't know how, <clears throat> if I had to put those extension uh, antennas on or whatever to help with the grounding issue, I don't know how the hell I do it because the tripod, you know, I don't know. Um, that's too damn windy out there. It's really cold today and rainy and freaking windy and cold. So, so I'm not sure. I'll have to watch, maybe watch that guy's video again. I'll have to find it. I know I got it saved somewhere. Um, see exactly what he did. <sighs> but then again... I don't have the tools to make what he made. I mean, he's got some piece of, you know, tiny, tiny rod or whatever. And he put threads on them. Which I don't have a tool to do that. And I'm not going to weld them on there because that's just stupid to do. And that'll just ruin the finish of the paint, you know, the paint on the freaking tripod. So it just won't look right. Uh, and then... It, it would be too hard to get a nut inside the pipe because you'd have to somehow put a damn nut inside of it. Um, well, if you did it way at the top where you could just maybe stick your finger in a little bit and you'd be alright, but... I don't know. But, that's the only thing I can think of doing because... Even if I went and got a base station antenna, I would still have to mount it to the tripod because... I'm not taking the tripod out now because it's got it made holes in my roof, obviously, and I don't want water getting in. And it's getting too late in the year now to be swapping, you know, shit around. I already put, you know, four hundred dollars into this already, so I got to make this crap work one way or another. And I just got to figure it out. So I may have to uh, 
get my uncle back up there, I guess, and I'll have to pull the the, the pipe out that the antennas mounted to, and somehow I don't know what I could do, or I don't think. Well, I know that I got a, I got some roll of 14 gauge steel wire, but I think that would be kind of too flexy in the wind, and that might just end up bending and. I don't think it would it would break unless something hit it. But the thing is, if something did hit it, it would bend, and then then it would be out of whack. You have to go back up there and bend it again, right? So you'd be better off putting something that's either stiffer, or you would have to put it on a spring or something, you know, so it allows it to flex. You know, because I don't I don't know if tree branches would ever hit it, but I think there's been a couple times a couple of branches are hit, hitting that weather antenna because I've heard some branches hit the house, so. But that's hardly ever. Maybe once out of a whole year or something that happens, but I don't know. But the only, yeah, I mean, like, the, like I said, the only reason why I didn't go with the base station antenna is just because, you know, for, and that, another thing is, too, is that they're too high. I don't need some stupid pipe, you know, sticking 50 million feet into the air, you know, and then the fucking FAA comes after me. Hey, your damn antenna's too freaking high, you know, like, I don't need that. So, I mean, I think you're. You're okay, but, <clears throat> you know, it's I don't want to have to do that. Because I'd have to change everything over again to make it work. So, now it's getting to be so freaking cold in, in the in the year, you know. Now, this time of the year, it's it's time to just, to not do much of anything anymore. Because we're not going to get any more nice days now. This, whatever's left of this week... Which probably by the time you even see this video, this week will already be done. After that, it's supposed to start getting colder and going really it's supposed to really go go south after that. So, <clears throat> so yeah, not too sure what else I could do. So, because I think it'd be you know it's kind of a waste of money. I thought it would work because it's, you know, there shouldn't be nothing wrong with the grounding. I figured maybe it had something to do with the power supply. Maybe that was definitely definitely on the weak side, but it is. But I only, I only got a 2 amp one coming right now, and, you know, and I got to turn around and go buy a bigger one. Well, hell, you're probably talking closer to, you know, 50 or 60 for a bigger one, so... I guess if I have to go bigger, I'm going to have to wait now on the possibly payday. Um, payday will be a better day because there'll, there'll be some money left over. I can't keep spending money because i got to save money right now. Because I'm waiting to see what the hell's going to go on with the tractor. Because I need money to finish that. and Because the damn tractor's still at the freaking shop. They're still waiting on that damn rim. They did everything else. They said the only thing that's stopping them is that fucking rim. Where the hell they ordered that from? I don't freaking know. It's like, geez, what did you order the damn thing from China or something? It's like, holy shit. It's, my tractor will be, would have been at the shop now two weeks at the end of this week. It would be two, it would have been a full two weeks that they would have had my tractor already. So. And then after they do get the fucking rim and I gotta, and they put that on, then I have to go over to this guy over here where I get my gas from. And he has to pull the calcium out of the other wheel so the tractor's balanced. And that's probably going to cost a couple hundred bucks, probably. So, I don't know. So, I got to... Right now, I got to keep money. You know, right now. I'm just going to have to make this, make this 2 amp power supply work. It'll be a little bit better than what I got now. Because the one that I got right now is only a 500 MA. And... That's nowhere near enough, I guess, for it. So a two amp should be a little bit better on it. And I really, it only needs two more amps after that, you know. So because apparently from the fuse says it only needs four amps, but that's a, that's a four amp fuse. But so the radio itself cannot be pulling any more than four amps. Because if it was, then you'd be blowing the fuse out all the freaking time. Because it's the fuse is because then the fuse would not would not be big enough for the radio. So. My uncle thinks it's probably at least pulling two and a half when it's 
when it first transmits or when it first fires up and stuff like that. But once it just idles, it's you know it takes very little power then when they're just idling. So I don't know, I'm gonna try it with the two amp um, some bitch, and then if I notice that I'm starting to get some traffic, then I mean then after that it, sh it should be fine. You know, I mean, I'll probably have to, I'll probably still have to upgrade, you know, to a 4 amp or, or a 10 amp or whatever the hell it is. And then, see how it is. The thing that I want to do is that I want to get on Big Red and I want to go out into one of the fields and test the CV. You know, test the CVs out and see if, you know, if the range is even going far enough to where I need it to go. I really only need, it only needs to go... For me, anyway, only about a mile. Because I don't really ever go beyond that. And if I do, well, you know. So. So, yeah, I, that's just, that's the thing, you know. I mean, it's only got to go about a mile. And obviously, I don't think it's even going a mile right now. Because why the hell am I not getting traffic? You know, not, I, I don't get it. Because I'm, I'm not getting anything on the CV side. But I'm getting weather channels, you know. So something's, something, something's weird somewhere. So, I gotta figure that one out. I don't know if it's just because of the, I mean, it could be the ground issue, and then it could be the power supply issue. You know, I want to see if it'll even make a difference hooking this 2 amp up to it. I want to see if, I, if there's even going to be a change in it, you know. But... So yeah, I don't know, it's a lot to think about when you're trying to install a CB radio. I think, you know, I think if you, if you really are going to install a CB in your house, I think, you know, you're better off, really probably just better off getting a base station antenna, but I'm not doing that because it's, not because they're expensive, I mean, they're only a hundred bucks, which is, you know, I ain't going to cry over it, but... The thing is that they're overkill for what I need it for. Even this 102 inch whip that I have now, it's overkill for what I need it for. I just got it because I liked it and I wanted to try it out. So, and yeah, I, and I did kind of I did know that the antenna was the hot side. I knew that because that's I had to figure that out for Big Red because even when I was installing Big Red's antenna, I wasn't sure. So I had to read the book on the antenna and the, it said that the antenna was the hot side or whatever, and the ground was just the ground. So. Or the mount or whatever was the ground and shit like that. So I know you know a lot of things about CVs, but then there's still a lot of things I gotta learn yet too. So and I'm not gonna learn all that freaking code shit because you know there's like codes that like code numbers you can use. But I you know I guess truckers use them when they talk. They have truckers. I'm not gonna bother with that shit because I'm never gonna probably ever talk to truckers. It's only gonna just be for you know, from Big Red to the house, you know, and if my grandma wants stuff in her house I, at some point, I don't know. Um, you know, and then the big tractor will get a CB, which won't be a big deal because I can just get a magnet mount antenna and it can ground itself to the roof. Okay, the roof is steel. So, but one thing at a time, one thing at a time, we got to figure out this house CB shit. But that's the only thing I can think of is that the power supply is too little and I have the wrong kind of grounding system going on there because the other, other you can look it up there's other, the other people that do it and they don't have their, their antenna on a 30 foot rod pipe you know they don't the, the guy that I think that, that I'm showing that I'm putting the link below to this guy's video his antenna is not even his antenna is no higher than mine actually his is a lot shorter than mine so, but he's got those little ground plane antennas sticking out on the sides, and maybe that's what I'm missing, because I need a ground, I need, I need a better grounding system for it. Um, if that's the case, I'll have to just take the damn pipe down, and, and I guess if someone knows how to make some metal or um, 
wire or whatever that you know are like tiny little pieces of rod and then if someone knows how to thread them and then I guess I can just buy the nuts for them at the hardware or something and just have to thread them on because that's basically what that's what this guy did on this video he changed his grounding rods out because apparently his that he had in there before weren't big enough and they were giving him kind of you know wonky readings so then he got a different set and apparently it's doing better now. So you can't use the 102 inch whip antenna. You just got to make sure that you do it the right way. And my way is not the right way right now. So. But I'm leaning more towards. A, I got a poor ground system going on. And I am not getting. I'm not giving it enough power. I'm not saying that the 2 amp is going to do any better. But it may help it improve it a little bit. But I'll have to upgrade I guess to a 7 or a 10 amp power supply then right now this two amps is going to have to work um until payday and on payday i'll order a 10 amp or something you know and, and then whatever from there right so and then uh if we still don't get anything well i'll have to just uh, have to figure out that grounding shit then my uncle i'll just have to take the antenna down then and i'll have to play with the pipe then over the winter i guess and then See if I can get some wire put on it or something to help with grounding wise. So, but yeah, I'm going to post that link below. Buzzsaw, you can check it out. Um, I mean, I probably would have helped too if my roof was made out of metal. But in a way, I'm glad it's not made out of metal because, holy hell, that would be loud during a hailstorm. I mean, yeah, that would be perfect because in hell you wouldn't need to run a, run a grounding wire then because it would, it would ground to the roof, but... It would help to get rid of it a little bit. It would make it do better. That's what I'm trying to say. But I don't have a metal roof. I'm not getting a metal roof just to have this. So I'm going to have to figure out that uh, grounding setup. Um, that's the only thing I can think of doing. And then upgrade my power supply. Right now I'm upgrading it now to a 2 amp. But that's probably still not going to give it. It may help it a tiny bit, but it's probably not going to give it what it needs. So, payday is only a few days away anyway, boys. So, and I haven't even had the CB on in, in the last couple of days because I've been thinking about what what he's been saying. And it's, you know, so I'm just trying to think about it because I know what he means and shit, you know. I, he's, he's obviously trying to help me out. And I do appreciate the help, you know. I appreciate it a lot. I like it when people help me out because I may do something wrong and I ain't gonna know how to get the hell out of it, you know. So, I like the input and the help. It's just that if you've been on YouTube as long as I've been on you on YouTube, you'll find some videos on stuff that I'm doing, you know, and, and there has to, there has to, I mean, I think he's also got a grounding wire too. But then again, he's got an eight foot fucking copper rod in the ground, so maybe that's what I gotta do too. Which, well, hell, it's getting close to the winter time now, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to drive a son of a bitch into the ground now. An eight foot. And what size? Half inch? Inch? Two inches thick? I don't fucking know any of that. That's all a mystery to me. You know. But what the hell is the difference, really? Because you're putting an eight foot copper pipe into the fucking ground. Well, you got like 100 feet of it running in your house. And that goes underground somewhere at some point. <laughs> you know, so that's all that should be grounding. My friend said that I should be grounding it to the panel in my basement. Which I don't know. It probably would be a little bit better, but hell, it, that's grounded to the pipe too. So, the hell is the difference? Either way, you're fucking grounding the system. So, so yeah, I don't know. That's the only thing, two things I can think of trying different is to get a bigger power supply for it and then putting those little um, ground plane antennas on it. But who would make those? I don't know, because I sure in the hell, I don't think I could do it, because I don't have a threading tool to make those threads. I mean, I could order one, it wouldn't be a big deal, but hell. I don't know if anyone online even makes them, I really you know. The way things are nowadays, you think that, that, you think that there'd be companies out there that would make these kind of things. So, my weather, weather radio antenna has them. It's got one big main antenna, which I think is what cap, captures all the, the signals. And then you got two that go out this way. And then you got another two that are kind of doing the same thing, but they're way smaller. So it's actually got like four um, antennas on it. 
And I think that's what my big CB antenna needs too. It needs more of those grounding plane antennas. I think that's what they call them. I don't remember now, but look at the video. Check the link out. I'll put the link below. And then you can check it out. Then from there, I don't know what I'd do. Someone would either have to make them for me. I can drill the holes, you know. But it would have to be at the very top of of that pipe. You know, I don't know, maybe the antenna's not even grounding very well to the copper or to the pipe because I'm using a clamp, you know, and it's got teeth on it. So maybe I should have just grounded the uh the mount, like the antenna mount itself, not even bother grounding the the mount. I don't know, maybe it's just not grounding good enough. I don't know. Um so you don't have to tell me, I guess, because I'm not sure. Uh, I think we probably could turn, could move the grounding wire up to the top, but uh, would that really help it much anyway? You think it would, it would be fine just the way it is now because you think it'd be grounding better through the pipe and into the tripod and then going through the wire and going wherever from there. But I don't know. I think the best thing to do right now is maybe just to figure out the power supply, get that out of the way, see if that improves it any, and then. And then I guess do those extra antenna thingies and see if that helps it any. So, but yeah, I mean, that's just my input on that. You know, I mean, that's what I see on YouTube and it works. So, but like I said, I don't have those. I don't have those antennas on the side of my antenna. And, and right now I got a, you know, small power supply for it. So right now I got the two amp coming. When the fuck that'll get here, I don't know. Uh, it might actually be here tomorrow, I don't know. So I'm going to put, I'm gonna hook that up and I'm going to try it. And then if I think it improved it a little bit, then I'm going to upgrade it and I'll go up to a 10 amp. Um, which that should be more than the power for it. And then this, if I still don't get the best range, I'll have to do the extra grounding antennas and try that. See if that helps it any. Because it really shouldn't matter too much. You know, because like I said, that guy did it, and, there, and there's a few other ones that have done it too. It's probably not the ideal thing. It's probably more time-consuming than anything else because, but you know, some people just like to do it that way. I guess I just thought it would be simple for me. But hell, maybe it's just simpler to get the freaking 18-foot PVC pipe thing, you know, and be done with it. I know what he's talking about, but I can't, I can't remember the name. But um, I know what you're talking about. I've looked at them. So, yeah, anyways, guys, I'm going to take off, so I guess, uh, have a good day and stuff and stuff, so, yeah, thanks for watching, guys, take her easy.